Welcome to the master class session on transcranial Doppler. In this practical session, we will discuss what we had learnt in the last two sessions. We use what is called as a power motion mode Doppler or M mode transcranial Doppler. With the M mode Doppler, we have multiple channels, each channel looking at an artery at a particular depth. One can insinate up to 6 cm of the intracranial space in one go. All the arteries in the line of insinuation will be assessed. This is the key advantage of an M-mode Doppler over a single channel transcranial Doppler that was used in the past. The Doppler probe we use is a 2 MHz probe. Sound waves are emitted from this probe at a given frequency. It is reflected by the moving object and the reflected wave is received by the same probe. The difference in the frequency of the emitted and the received signal determines the direction of the flow and the velocity of the flow. Now, let's look at a typical display on the monitor. The upper half shows the spectral waveform and the lower half shows the M mode display. The M mode display is color coded. Red means flow is towards the probe. Blue means flow is away from the probe. On the left hand side is the depth. In this particular instance, we have insinuated all arteries from a depth of 50 mm to a depth of approximately 100 mm. We can get a spectral waveform at any given depth. In this instance, we have a spectral waveform at 50 mm depth. We know the direction of flow is towards the probe. And at 50 mm, we would insinuate the ipsilateral M1 middle cerebral artery. Now look at the top half. At the depth, we know it is 50 mm. If one increases the gain, the signal increases, but the background noise would also increase. One can adjust the scale to increase or decrease the height of the peak systolic velocity. Power determines the strength. And the sample determines the volume of tissue or the volume of space that is assessed. Now, let's dissect the spectral waveform further. On the left hand side of the spectral waveform display, you have the velocity. Then, the horizontal axis is the time on the right hand side you get the decibels. Higher the decibel it is represented by yellow and lower the decibel it is represented as black. Also you get a display of the pulsatility index, the mean flow velocity and the systolic and diastolic velocity. Let's look at it in more detail. Now this is the peak systolic flow or velocity this represents the dichrotic notch at which the aortic valve closes. This represents the end diastolic flow or velocity. So there are three parts to this spectral waveform. The red, pink and the yellow. The red represents the systolic acceleration. The pink represents the late systolic deceleration. And the yellow, the diastolic deceleration. One also needs to look at the end diastolic flow or velocity and compare it with the peak systolic flow or velocity. Normally, the flow at the end diastolic end diastole is approximately 20, between 20 and 50 percent of the peak systolic flow. Also, one needs to look at the slope of the systolic acceleration, slope of the late systolic deceleration and at the peak. These are things that we had discussed in the last few sessions and this is a revision of them. In the next session, we will discuss the pathological conditions and how a waveform would look like in those instances. Thank you very much for your attention.